In this video I'm going to show you how to use a Halloween Photoshop action. So the way the action works is you open up your photo, you fill in your subject with a color and just play the action. Okay, so here is the effect that the action creates. And there's a lot of options for uh, customizing the effect and the action also creates a 50% color logs that you can choose from. So I'm just going to close these two windows now. And when you open up your photo, before you use the action, there are a few things that you should check uh, to make sure that the action will run without any errors. So the first thing that you should check is that your photo is a background layer. So it should be called a background and have this little lock icon. So if you have something like this or anything else, just go to layer, new and choose a background from layer. And then click on this menu icon here and go to panel options. And just make sure that the option add copy to copied layers and groups is checked. They go to image mode and uh, your photo should be in RGB color mode 8 bit scale. Then check the image size here. So for best results, you should use the photos that are about between uh, 20 to 35. Uh, under pixels wide or high. Okay. So to load the action, go to Window, Actions, click on the menu icon right here, Load Actions, and just choose the action according to your Photoshop version. Select the action file, click Load, and the action file will appear in uh, the in your Actions panel. They go to Layer, New Layer to create a new layer. And name it brush. It's very important that you uh, type it exactly like this, all letters lowercase, otherwise the action won't work. Click OK. And now while this layer is selected, what you have to do is to just uh, fill in your subject with a color. So you can do that on a various way. You can, for example, make a selection of your subject, then fill it with the color. You can just brush over your subject. So you can hit B or keyboard to select the brush tool, choose any color here, color doesn't matter. Pixel and salt brush and start brushing over your subject. And what I like to do is to just use a smaller brush uh, for the edges, like this. Okay. Here I don't have uh, a defined uh, subject edges, so there I can just brush like this with a uh, larger brush and uh, I have done brush before so just gonna open my uh, PSD file okay here it is so it's important that you have this uh, color fill on this brush layer and all you have to do now is to just select the Halloween action and click play so I'm going to fasten the video here and uh, they should stop twice with uh, messages asking you to do some quick things. So I'm going to fasten the video uh, here and get back when the first message shows. Okay, so here's the first message. It says, in next pop-up window, choose the texture file that can be downloaded and click place. Then position and transform the texture so it suits the face of your subject. After you place it and transform it as you like, just hit enter. Choose continue to proceed. So you click continue. And now just select the texture file that can be downloaded, click place. And what you have to do is to just position these uh, textures so it so it's uh, the face of your subject you don't have to be too much precise here now as uh, you'll be able uh, to transform the texture uh, later once the action is finished so just gonna place it quickly like this and I'm gonna make uh, transformations to make it perfect later okay so now all you have to do is to just hit enter and the action will continue to work. Okay, so here's another message. And it says, in next pop-up window, choose OK and then position and adjust the light source as you like. To change position of the light source, choose the move tool, click anywhere assign the canvas and drag or out to position it as you like. To change size of the light source, change the radius. To change style and angle of the light source, change the style and angle. After you finish, play the action again. Choose continue to proceed. So click continue, choose OK. And now to move this, light source, all you have to do is to click anywhere inside the canvas and just drag this light source where you would like, okay, like this. You can change the angle and uh, you can change, you can scale the light source. Uh, you'll also be able to make this 
uh, changes later and you can also change uh, the style of the light source. Okay, so I'm going to position it like this and after you click OK, it actually continue to work. So I'm going to fasten the video uh, here again and get back when the action is finished. Then I'm going to go throughout all the layers to show you how each layer works, how can you customize it uh, to get the most out of the effect. Okay, so the action here just finished, so I'm just going to close the actions panel. And the first thing that you probably want to do each time you run the action is to just quickly close down all these folders. So how to quickly do that is to just hold Control and those buttons for a PC or Command Option for a Mac. And while this folder is selected, just click on this little arrow here. So that way you're just going to close down all the folders. Just expand the layers panel a little bit. So how I like to customize these effects to just start from the subject here. But before that, I'm just going to hide this uh, layer over here. So this is the overall sharpening. And if you're happy with this result, uh, you can change the sharpening here by uh, changing the opacity of this layer. Uh, that's how you change the sharpening. But as I'm going to, if we just move this layer here, you can see all these lines. So they are giving the sharpening to the design. And as I'm going to customize this texture and other, uh, uh, these lines will have to be updated uh, as well. So I will have to create this layer again. So because I want to customize this effect, I'm going to hide this layer and I'm going to create it again later. So I'm just going to open the subject folder and select the uh, texture layer. Uh, here, okay. So firstly, I'm going to uh, customize this texture to make it uh, fit the subject space perfectly. So what I'd like to do is to just drop the opacity of this layer, something like this, so I can see the subject behind and better uh, transform this texture. So first, I'm just going to press Control or Command T on a keyboard and right-click and choose Warp, just to make some. Uh, basic transformation here. So I'm just going to move this area a little bit down, and then just going to move this one here up. So, it, uh, so, it, so it's this area here. So I'm just going to repeat that a few times. Okay, like this. Just gonna hit enter, and I'm just gonna press Control Command T again just to make this uh, texture a bit uh, more narrow. Okay, and I'm gonna position it uh, like this. So this is some uh, basic uh, transformation. So now to make more detailed transformation, it's going to go to Edit and choose Puppet Warp. How this works is you inserting a pin, and when you add a pin, you can then wrap uh, this layer around that pin. And if you want to, for example, uh, warp some area over here, I wish to keep other area, uh, areas untouched, then you have to add a pins on that area, because when you insert a pin, the area around that pin will be untouched while you move some other pin. So I'm just going to add uh, several pins on some key areas to keep them uh, untouched. Okay. So uh, Firstly, I'm just going to add one pin here, and um, I'm going to drag this one a little bit up, like this. And I'm going to add another pin over here, and drag it a little bit to the left. So I'm going to do the same here, one pin to move this area a little bit up, and uh, one pin over here move these areas to the right. Okay. And uh, I'm going to add one pin in here because I want to move this one to the bottom. So I want to this pin hold these areas around untouched. So I'm just going to also warp this area a little bit here as well. And 
can add one pin over here over here okay that's done uh, perfectly so just gonna uh, change the opacity uh, and uh, now what I'm going to do is as you can see some areas of the subject are visible here so I'm just gonna uh, hide this layer for now and select the main subject and the main subject layer has this uh, subject main subject saturation layer here that is uh, desaturating these layers so you can double click here and change the saturation uh, of the subjects I'm just gonna keep it default so I'm going to select the layer mask of the subject layer uh, press B on the keyboard to select uh, brush tool set program color to black choose a soft brush and I'm just gonna brush or areas that are visible behind the texture okay so if you just turn off and on this layer mask you see the difference okay and now as you can notice uh, these areas where I have brushed with the black where I have removed the subject are now uh, darker because the background there uh, is the uh, this background right that we have because, because we have removed the subject so the area now here is the background that is dark and now uh, because of that this uh, texture seems dark from this area as well so then you select this layer blur subject uh, says brush white into the mask here so you select this layer mask and brush with a white over the areas that you have removed here you can control or command click on this layer mask to see which areas exactly you have uh, removed of the subject and then just uh, brush over that areas with the white this layer uh, will not be visible on any areas uh, except this where you have brushed with the black because on that areas you can remove your subject and then this layer uh, here is a visible dead areas but you have to brush with a uh, with a white okay just like this so if you just hide this layer now and this you will see this this is a, a blur subject okay so whatever details you remove from the subject then you brush with dead areas with a white here to make these layers visible dead areas except the subject areas because this layer doesn't have any details okay it's just gonna make uh, just turn it off and then you see it make these areas gonna give them the original uh, color and uh, uh, very close to original colors and levels but it will not reveal details as this layer here and uh, I'm gonna hide this layer again so you have to remove these uh, eyebrows of the subject so just gonna select the in subject layer um, and I'm gonna do this with a patch tool so I'm just gonna make a quick selection around the eyebrow and then just click and move up just like this you can repeat you can repeat the same uh, process several times if needed and I'm just gonna do the same over here so you're choosing when you drag the selection you're choosing which areas uh, the Photoshop will use to fill these areas that you have selected okay so now uh, I'm gonna select this uh, texture and I'm going to select this uh, layer mask and just set foreground color to black here and just gonna uh, with the soft brush I'm gonna brush quickly to remove uh, these textures over the subject eyes so they are visible if you have seeded the areas you wanted you can just brush with the white uh, on that areas and texture will be visible that areas as well uh, again so that means it will hide that areas that you brush of the subject so I'm gonna do the same here but as the areas are very dark and you can't see the eye details what you can do is just drop this opacity to zero 
You must not hide the layer because if you hide the layer, you cannot brush this layer mark. So just drop the opacity to zero and then just brush with the black. Like this. Then you can bring back the opacity to 100%. Okay, and uh, this layer here uh, is a texture brightness. So when you double click on this layer thumbnail, you can change the texture brightness by moving these sliders. And what I'm going to do is just going to move this slider a bit to the left to fade the highlights slightly. So this one is fading a highlight. This one is fading a shadows. And this one here is, is boosting the shadows, this one here is boosting the highlights, and this one here is for uh, mid-tones. You can boost or drop the mid-tones, okay? So, and now I'm just gonna select this uh, layer here. It uh, says uh, darken eye holes, brush white into the mask. So you like select this uh, layer mask and set foreground color to white. And as you can see now, details here are visible around the eyes but darkened and if you wish to make them pure black uh, you can just darken them by brushing white into this layer mask okay so just gonna quickly brush over these areas to make them darker Double click on this layer and add a color overlay. You can add some color like this to just better see which areas you have brushed and uh, which areas you didn't brush. Okay, just like this. And if you brushed over some areas that you didn't want it, you can just brush uh, with a uh, black to the layer mask again and you're just gonna start removing this layer. Okay, and I'm just gonna quickly brush over here. I'm just gonna turn on this uh, color overlay uh, layer style so just to better see which edges you have brushed and the uh, Okay, so just gonna hide this uh, layer style now. Okay, so just let's just uh, check the difference. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is. Um, as this uh, photo here have uh, just had these layer masks, you see that already it has these areas uh, darkened over here. So just to make this texture better blends, uh, I'm going to slightly remove it on this area over here. But before that, uh, I'm just going to remove these areas that are exceeding the face of the subject. 
okay so just gonna select the layer terminal double click on the puppet warp just to drag this area a little bit more like this okay so now I'm gonna select the layer mask set program color to black and uh, I'm going to start removing the texture on all areas where necessary Okay, so now I'm gonna brush over these edges. You can also lower the opacity of this uh, texture if it's easier for you to work on that way like this. So you can better see the edges of the subject Okay, so we're gonna do the same for the other side. When here the subject is not visible so well, so it's a bit harder to do it. I'm just going to change the opacity back to 100%. I'm just going to um, brush with a black here over the subject just to darken a little bit this area behind to make these details of the uh, texture uh, better visible. Okay. And uh, now I'm just going to brush uh, over here. Uh, here you're going to use a larger, uh, larger soft brush. I'm going to brush like this. Okay. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the opacity of this brush, something like this, and then uh, brush with the black or this half of the texture, just like that, just to make it better blends with the photo better to better suit the photo as this area of the face the whole this left area of the subject is darkened so I'm going to uh, that's why I have a brush with a, a black over this area here to make this part of the texture darkened as well so I'm just gonna uh, get over this part of the texture again but a little bit more uh, I'm going to go a bit more to the left and just brush like this to make these edges here more dark. Okay, so when you alt option here, you can see how the layer mask uh, looks. Okay, you can brush with these edges a bit more to make it a little bit more uh, removed in these areas. Okay, that's it. So I'm pretty much uh, happy with this now. So just gonna close the folder, and uh, I'm going to uh, uh, continue with casting my other layers. So I got a background color layer here. You can change the color, and double click here, and uh, choose any color 
uh, that you like and uh, here we got a background texture and you can just click on the word opacity here and change the opacity of this layer so you can just uh, drag to the left or to the right and or you can also click on this arrow here and then just drag this slider to the side and I'm going to set the opacity to a little bit lower like this uh, here we got a foreground texture so the background texture is not visible over your subject just behind the subject this texture here covers the whole subject uh, the whole photo excuse me so you can also just click and drag it aside to adjust the opacity and here we got a lighting and the overall brightness layer so these two layers are adjusting the, the overall uh, lighting and brightness of the photo and you can see so it's just going to open the lighting folder and here we got a light source layer so you can now double click on this layer thumbnail and make any changes uh, that you like uh, like I have shown when this window appeared in the message so you can change the style, you can change the angle, the scale, you can move these light source and other and you can change uh, the intensity of the light source by uh, changing the opacity alright and this layer here it says darken background this layer is going to darken all areas around your light source so for example if you have, if you, if you have moved this light source somewhere else or anything uh, other you need to update this layer as well and how to do that is to just press ctrl command j on your keyboard to duplicate this layer right click on this layer and choose a rasterize layer then you control or command this layer thumbnail to make a selection of it right click and choose delete layer then you select this uh, dark and background layer select its layer mask right click on it and choose delete layer mask and then just add click here to add um, a new layer mask using this selection and you can just then just press Control or Command I on your keyboard to, uh, to invert uh, these uh, layer masks. So now this layer mask darkens all areas except the light source areas. Okay. So you have to do this only if you have uh, changed uh, the settings of the light source after the action is finished. And here we got the darken edges. So this layer is going to darken uh, the edges of the whole photo so you can change its opacity uh, to, uh, the, the same way as for the other layers. So for all layers you change the opacity by either change, clicking with the word opacity and drag it aside or clicking on this little arrow here and then just moving this slider. And I'm going to set opacity to this one about something like this and here we got the overall brightness layer so just going to as you can see uh, we can double click here and make any changes to these layers if you want and or change its opacity just going to darken uh, mostly mid tones uh, uh, so it's going to uh, create more focus to this area uh, where the light source is okay as you can see it's going to darken a bit all areas outside and um, here we got the overall contrast so how you change the contrast is you change the opacity okay and here we got a color looks folder so when you open the folder you can choose from uh, uh, 50 different uh, color looks so all you have to do is just select some color look uh, turn it down see how it looks if you don't like it simply try with another till you find the one that goes best with your photo ok 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one here. What you can also do is you can combine a few color So that's what I'm going to do uh, now. So I have turned on this color look here, and I'm going to turn on this one here, uh, or this one here actually. Okay, and now I'm just gonna uh, drop the opacity of this layer like this. So you can combine more color looks on the on uh, this way. You can even turn on another color look and then change its opacity and create some unique uh, color look. And now I'm just gonna double click uh, here. This is the overall vibrant saturation layer. So you double click here on the layer thumbnail and inside the properties panel, uh, you can adjust the vibrance and the saturation. I'm going to increase the uh, vibrance a little bit and also uh, saturation. One more thing that I'm going to do here is uh, select the subject a layer mask and um, I'm gonna uh, s select the a soft brush and just gonna brush a little bit like this or these areas. So now I have removed the subject on these areas over here. If I just turn it off and now you can see a difference. Um, and then what I'm going to do is gonna open the properties window here, uh, the properties panel, and uh, now just change the density. When the density is set 100%, then uh, if you brushed with a black, the layer will be removed in those areas completely. If you set it to zero, then the layer mask will uh, not make any uh, effect the layer. So I'm going to set the density something like this, so it just removes the subject slightly in these areas, so just to fade it a little bit. And what I'd like to do is to just go to layer new group, a new group from layers. Click OK to just add this complete group into another group, so I can add another uh, another layer mask. And then I brush again with a black, but a little bit closer to the edge of the canvas, as you can see. Just to make these uh, Areas here is subject completely removed, and so that's what this layer mask is going to do because I'm going to leave density at 100%. So this layer mask is going to remove these edges completely, and then this one here is going to just fade the subject a little bit to make a smooth transition here, okay? And now I'm just going to turn off these layers. So as you can see, this layer is not getting a proper sharpening now because I had to swarm these texture and make other transformations. So what I'm going to do is just uh, press delete to delete this layer and now just press control command uh, control command uh, plus alt uh, option shift and D uh, to make a snapchat and then control or command shift U uh, to desaturate this layer then go to filter other high pass set radius to 2 pixels, <coughs> excuse me, and choose OK and just change this layer blending mode to hard light now and you can now change the sharpening by changing the opacity. Okay, and let's just quickly check the before and after, <coughs> excuse me. So this is the before and this is the after effect. Okay. Uh, I hope you understood everything, but if you still need any help or you got any questions, feel free to contact me anytime via my Envato profile page. Thanks for watching.